Hello, today we are going to be looking at aesthetics and considering how it plays a part in literature and how that part it plays also is important to us in our own life and in our society. Let's look at two definitions of aesthetics. One definition of aesthetics is that it's a branch of philosophy that deals with the principles of beauty and artistic taste. But another definition is a set of principles underlying and guide, guiding the work of a particular artist or artistic movement. The second definition is the one we're going to be most interested in in this class. A set of principles underlining and guiding the work of a particular artist or artistic movement. What we will see is that there are specific aesthetics we can recognize that are particular to, again, an author, a time period, or even a specific genre. Let's look at some examples of aesthetics in literature. For example, Beowulf. Beowulf is an example of Anglo-Saxon poetry. In Anglo-Saxon poetry, we typically find characteristics like kennings, alliteration, anaphora, and themes like Christian pagan duality or what makes a good person or comitatus versus exile. When we understand these elements and we look for them in Anglo-Saxon poetry, we can better understand the type of people that wrote these poems and what their lives were like. Another example of aesthetics in literature is the modern short story. In the modern short story, the structure is character driven. The setting influences the characters. Where and when the story takes place determines the different factors that make the character what they are. Symbolism reflects the character and theme. And point of view connects the reader in a natural and realistic manner to the subject of the story. Also, we look for the idea that word choice is purposeful, reflecting a specific tone. By knowing these specific elements in a short story, we can better understand the story and appreciate the point the author is trying to make. Some examples of short stories are The Story of an Hour by Kate Chopin, Accident by Dave Eggers, and Harrison Bird Run by Kurt Vonnegut. Also, we can appreciate the specific aesthetics incorporated by specific artists or authors. We can recognize their style. For example, Ernest Hemingway. We, we recognize that Ernest Hemingway typically uses short, simple sentences. He includes ambiguity and he does it on purpose. His setting, although he, in a very minimalistic style, always includes some kind of symbolic meaning. The tone tends to be detached. He focuses on a code he himself um, developed called the Hemingway Code. And many times he includes a Hemingway Code hero, which follows certain principles related to that code. And of course, he questions and considers the concept of nada. So why should we care about aesthetics? One, it helps us discover who we are. Two, it helps us relate to the society around us. And three, it leads to the development of ideas, movements, and influences. Remember, we said, understanding aesthetics helps us discover who we are. For example, we see this in our preferences in our response to influences, and in our portrayal of our own selves. Our preferences, that can be what style of hair you prefer, what type of clothing you like to wear, what types of music you like to listen to, and what type of art, literature, film, television you prefer. It also can be response to influences. You consider, are you someone who conforms to popular trends? Do you start new trends? Do you follow trends but make them your own? 
Do current ideas influence what you like? Or do you express your views about current events in your dress, your hairstyle, the type of music you listen to, the shows you watch, and or the books you read? Aesthetics influences how we portray ourselves. From our hairstyle, to our choice of clothing, how we arrange or decorate our space. For example, it could be our bedroom, our apartment, or even something small like uh, the stickers on our laptop or the patches on our sleeves of our jacket. How we express ourselves in social media and how we communicate to others what we are feeling and what we want them to think about ourselves. Understanding aesthetics also helps us relate to the society around us. In the society, we can share our views and our preferences, and we tend to go into groups that share the same ideas and the same views that we have. And then we define our role within a specific group. Are we a follower? Are we a leader? and determines how we respond to events and norms. Our response to events and norms can be reflected in the way we portray ourselves, or the types of books that we read, or what we create. When you look at shared views and preferences, you think about, do you gravitate toward people with similar views as you have? Are you influenced when other people express appreciation for a movie, song, or look? Do you follow specific groups? Do you have a chance to agree or disagree with what those around you think about art, music, movies, and ideas? In other words, are you part of the movement or are you the mover? Let's also think about what factors contribute to the development of aesthetics in a society. It can be a reaction to historical events. For example, in the Romantic period, like we see here with Napoleon Bonaparte, um, the clothing, the fashion, was very much reflective of the Greco-Roman times, which was supposed to be the idea of the Greco-Roman Republic, democracy, those ideals that they felt that they had um, borrowed from the Greeks and the Romans. And also, the clothing became more close-fitting and natural, reflecting that it's in a human being's natural state to have life and liberty. Um, we also see that sometimes these factors come about by the acceptance or questioning of religious views. For example, some stained glass windows that we see are a celebration of the current religious views and practiced by a certain people. Or we may see that some works of art come about because people questioned certain religious views. For example, Pilgrim's Progress was written as an allegory as a way to question the status quo of religion in England. Sometimes we can also see aesthetics developing because people either are conforming to or questioning one's culture. For example, in the Victorian era, the fashion was, the, you know, t the women's fashion was very restrictive, kind of reflecting the idea that women were conforming to their roles in Victorian England as wives and mothers and the angel in the house. Or sometimes we see um, fashion as a statement against that status quo. A woman wearing trousers instead of a dress to question whether or not she should, she has to conform to what society expects of her. Sometimes it can come out of acceptance or discontent with the status quo. Also, they, there we see the views of individuals within a society being reflected in the aesthetics that are related to a certain movement, to a certain group of people, to a certain author, etc. 
So aesthetics can lead to the development of ideas, movements, and influences. So some there's that one mover who the person who that influencer who can establish a new way of presenting or expressing something and that develops a new movement and can cause ideas to flourish. For example, Common Sense by Thomas Paine he presented the idea of human rights. He did it in a way that would make sense, common sense, to the society that came before the Romantic period. This was a society that was shaped by the idea of logic, order, there was a prescribed hierarchy, there were established roles. The monarch had the right to rule, and the subjects basically, their role was to follow the rules of the monarch without question. The Romantic movement grew out of Paine's idea that all people have rights to things such as life and liberty. But again, he presented it, making the choices of using logic and order to present these new ideas because he knew that would appeal to the old order and help bring in a new one. So after the time of Thomas Paine and the introduction of ideas such as life and liberty and revolution and individuality, the literature and the works of art are reflecting those ideals. We see that the literature of the Romantic period includes spiritual supernatural elements, it includes vivid sensory description, focus on emotions, not just on logic and reason. It focuses on nature, particularly untamed nature, not just symmetry. It focuses on aesthetic beauty, not just on necessity. And there's themes of solitude, revolution, and freedom, not just logic and reason and discovery. Also, there's a strong focus on the self, the individual. Another example of um, aesthetics leading to the development of ideas, movements, and influences is the Vorticist movement. In the early 1900s, they were disillusioned by the established ideals of the Victorian age. So prior to the Vorticist movement, art and literature followed expected structure and sent a message of conforming to specific ideals, like God and country, woman as the angel in the house. The Vorticists encouraged breaking away from the status quo and embracing chaos as a way to protest an overly structured society that they felt did not work. And they broke away from the rules of literature, of format, of font styles, of the way to express themselves in poetry, finding new ways of putting information together that did not follow the structured rules. Let's look at some examples from modern aesthetics. For example, anime. An example of anime would be Hero Academy. When you watch anime or you see anime or you see other people watching anime, what helps you recognize anime? What features or characteristics are shared by anime series as a whole? What ideals do they get across? What themes are common to anime series? Also, BTS is a very popular music group. The genre ranges from boy band, popular music, to more specifically K-pop. So what characteristics do the songs of BTS share? Even if they write, sing a, a variety of different types of songs, are there common themes, their common style of them presenting that music? So when we learn to appreciate the aesthetics reflected in a work of literature, we understand what influenced the expression of these aesthetics. We better understand how society reacts and changes we better understand how we fit in that society, and we better understand ourselves and how our own expression of our emotions and ideas can influence society. Thank you.